Hey everyone, it's Maureen from Teacher Baker Maker. Today I'm going to show you how to make a beaded mask chain. Now, the ones I'm going to show you are made with glass beads. Um, this one that I've already made, I've also included two lava beads that you can put essential oils on, um, and that would be at your neck area. Um, and you would use this to attach to your mask so that way during the day, when you have to take a meal break, rather than putting your mask down on the table or sticking it in a bag that's full of germs, um, you can just let it hang down um, at the top of your chest and that way it's not hitting against the table or anything like that. So this one that I, I already have done is made in different sea glass colors, but the one I'm going to make for you today is going to be made using more neutral shades of gray and black. So the supplies that you're going to need are some beads, um, I have chosen to use all eight millimeter beads. You can use any size beads you want. Obviously, the larger the bead, the fewer that you need. Um, since I'm also using the diffuser beads, I also have some black lava stones that I'm going to be using. For the ends of the chain, you're going to need a crimper tool. This is slightly different than standard pliers because a crimper tool has little notches for you to pinch the bead shut. And the beads that you are going to be using are called crimp beads. Um, these happen to be two and a half millimeter crimp beads. They're teeny tiny little rings. If you want to cover up the teeny tiny little ring to make it look a little bit more finished, you can get crimp covers. For the clasp, I'm using 15 millimeter lobster clasps. You don't want to go smaller than 15 millimeter because you want to make sure that your um, opening is large enough to fit the elastic on the side of your mask. So this is a disposable mask. It has fairly thin, stretchy elastic um, on the edges. If you're using one of those masks where it's more like a fabric loop, you're definitely going to need something bigger than a 15 millimeter because those fabric loops are very thick. Um, so you might want to bring your mask to the store with you when you're buying a lobster class, just to make sure that you're getting one that has a big enough of an opening so that your, um, your elastic can actually slide through it. If it's jammed in there and it can't slide, it might make it a little bit trickier to get the mask on and off. So just keep that in mind. Um, in terms of the string, I'm using seven strand bead stringing wire. This is a nylon wire that um, is a little bit stiffer than thread would be, um, yet it's still sturdy enough to support the weight of these glass and metal beads that I'm using. You will need a measuring tape just to measure how long you actually want yours because everybody's different. You might have personal preferences. You'll need just some standard scissors. And if you are using the crimp bead covers, you're also going to need just some regular flat needle nose pliers. These are from my toolkit in my garage, so nothing fancy about these. Um, if you want to, you can buy something very similar in the jewelry making section of the craft store, but you can definitely get away with whatever you have in your garage for that one. So these are the basic supplies. When you go to the craft store, they literally have thousands of different choices of beads. So you can go crazy. Um, my recommendation is do not use metal beads like these, even though they look fabulous, they're a lot harder to disinfect because number one, they have lots of little nooks and crannies. Number two, it's just labeled metal beads. Who knows what type of metal that is? So if you are using disinfecting wipes or any type of wipe, it will probably eventually take the finish right off of these. So you're better off using glass beads or smoother beads that are not made of metal. I would also suggest avoiding anything that is um, sparkly because again, there's lots of nooks and crannies in this. As you are wiping them down each day, you might eventually knocking off some of the, the sparkles in this and it won't look so great. So again, simple is better. If you're making these for a child, I would suggest using the plastic beads. Number one, it's lighter weight. Number two, if they do start um, swinging these around or they drop them on the floor, you don't have to worry about the plastic breaking as much as you would with these glass beads. Um, but again, you want something too. Then they make lots of different styles of plastic beads. They even make ones that look like little soccer balls and they have ones with uh, letters on them so you can really customize your child's uh, neck 
lanyard or, or, or mask chain if you want to. So this is what you need to begin. Okay, so what I did was I chose the combination of beads that I wanted and I arranged them here on this bead design board. You do not need a bead design board. The benefit of it is that you can arrange the beads in whatever combination you want, whatever pattern you want. It has like this flocked surface to it so the beads don't roll around. But if this is the one and only thing you're ever going to be making out of beads, you can definitely do this just by kind of laying them out on the table um, or put the beads in a little bowl so that they're not rolling all over the place. When I do my beads, um, I like to take them off of the string, but then I put a little piece of tape on the end. That way I still have them attached to the little packing parts. That way if I ever do need to go back to the store to get more, whether it's this week or a year from now to make a, a bracelet or something, I know exactly what the model number and everything is so it's much easier to find rather than trying to figure out which store I bought them at. So, um, but again, you definitely do not need this particular board. I cut my wire slightly longer than the length I want it. I want my finished neck chain to be about 20 inches long. That's about what I made this one. Um, this one's slightly shorter than 20. Um, that just happens to be the size that I need for my particular neck, but you could measure it um, on your own neck using a measuring tape just to see. So just cut it a few inches longer on each end just that you have a little bit extra to work with um, and then you're ready to go. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take one of our lobster clasps and you're gonna thread the wire through the little hole at the end, then fold it over. Now you're going to take one of your teeny tiny crimp beads and you are going to slide it from the opposite end of the wire. Okay, so the end that doesn't have the lobster clasp on it, you're gonna slide it down on that. Okay, then when you fold this over, you wanna give yourself an inch or two of um, fold over just because this is, you're gonna kind of weave it back underneath some of the first beads on your strand. So when you fold it over, you're then going to take that little crimp bead and you are now going to thread the short tail through the crimp bead as well. So basically the crimp bead is going to have two layers of the wire going through it. Okay, there we go. Now make sure your wire is not twisted. You want the, the two wires to be parallel. You're then gonna push that crimp bead as close to the lobster clasp as you can get it, like so. And then I'm going to take my crimping tool. And in the crimping tool, it has different size notches. So for the first crimp, you're gonna go for the one on the outer notch. So basically you take your crimping tool, put it in that outer notch, give it a squeeze. Then you're gonna go to the second notch of your crimping tool, the inner notch, give it a squeeze. Then go back to that first notch. You're gonna kind of rotate the crimping bead because you wanna try and round it off because when you crimp it, you're basically flattening it. So you want it to be just a little bit rounder. So you might have to pinch a couple of times. But basically what the crimp bead is doing is it's locking the two wires together and it's locking your lobster clasp in place. Now to make this look a little bit fancier, we're going to take one of the crimp bead covers, which basically look like the letter C at this point. And then you're going to take your regular needle nose pliers, not the one with the little notches in it, but the regular needle nose pliers, just to kind of pinch it like so. Okay, then we're going to take that little C-shaped crimp cover, put it over that squished crimp bead that we have here. And then just give it a little squeeze. You don't wanna flatten that outer cover because again, this is your decorative cover. So you might have to just pinch it from a few different angles just so that it's completely closed. And now you've got that decorative cover covering up the not so pretty crimp bead underneath. Um, so again, just gives it a more finished look. 
Now, to thread the beads, since I have it all laid out on my bead design board, this makes it really easy. My design is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which is on the left, which is on the right, but I'm going to start from one end and simply just thread one bead at a time down through this. Now, in terms of my diffuser beads, the lava beads, I decided that having them approximately four inches from the end worked best for me. I didn't want to put them too far down on the strand because then the diffuser bead would be um, interfering with my shirt. And if I was putting essential oil on it, I don't wanna get oil on my shirt before the oil has a chance to kind of dry. So instead I wanted to make sure that it was far enough up on the strand that it would actually be touching my neck more. They do make lava beads in all different colors. I have found though that I had bought some blue, like dark blue beads one time and they looked fabulous until I put essential oil on them for the first time. And after about an hour, I noticed that my wrists were blue because it was on a bracelet like this. Um, and it was because the dye that they had used on that particular brand of bead apparently was not necessarily set. Um, now, as we're doing this, we just wanna make sure that that part that was folded is going through the beads. So it's gonna go backwards over the first few beads on my strand now. And I'm just making sure that that folded tail is going back through the beads. And some of these beads, the hole is a little bit narrower than others. So again, just want to make sure that it's at the right spot there. There we go, that's pretty good. You can always trim off any excess if it doesn't seem like it's laying correctly inside those stones. But again, we're looking pretty good so far. Um, so like I was saying, the, the, the brightly colored lava stones must have some type of dye in them. The, the bleeding of the color stopped after I used the bracelet maybe three or four times. So it doesn't bleed forever and it wasn't as noticeable because it was on my wrists, but being that this is going to be touching my neck, I really don't want a blue neck. So I decided not to use any colorful beads. Instead, I just am using these standard black ones. So here's my first lava bead right here, threading that through. Basically a lava bead is a porous bead. So if you do add a drop of essential oil to it, it will give you the benefits throughout the day, not only of the fragrance of the essential oil, but any beneficial properties it might have. So for instance, there's one essential oil that I use called Thieves Oil, um, and that one is um, good for warding off germs. So being that we're wearing masks as a way of warding off germs, I'm probably going to be using a drop of Thieves Oil each day on the beads. Uh, some people say that they reload the oils a couple of times during the day. I haven't found that I need to do that. Um, in my case, I could put a drop of Thieves Oil on this bracelet in the morning and 24 hours later, I could still smell it. So um, I don't feel the need to necessarily even reload every single day. Entirely a personal preference up to you. Um, being that these mass chains are going to get disinfected each night with a wipe of some sort, that might wear off the fragrance a little bit faster than normal. So I might be reloading the fragrance more often on the neck chain than I have in the past with my bracelets. So as you can see, the, th the threading goes fairly quickly. I'm almost at the halfway point. And if you're making these for a child, as I said before, I would recommend more of the plastic beads or um, like a solid stone type bead instead of the glass beads. I mean, I've been wearing these bracelets now for a couple of years. I've never had an issue where a stone breaks or the glass breaks. Um, and obviously with the bracelet, you know, I'm, I'm hitting it on the table all day long. So, you know, they're pretty sturdy. I, I can't imagine that the glass is just gonna go shattering on you. But again, with a child, you never know. 
I've seen kids do very strange things with their school supplies in my class. So um, if you think you have a child who's gonna be chewing on these or is gonna be swinging them in the air um, before anybody stops them, mm, glass is probably not the best idea. I would go with the plastic. Now in terms of the price of these beads, craft stores typically have sales on these beads every single week. Sometimes it'll be their entire collection is on sale. Sometimes it'll be certain styles on sale. I would suggest getting them while they're on sale just because you do save a pretty hefty chunk of change. But even if you're paying full price, this entire necklace is probably gonna cost you under $10, no matter what style of bead or combination of beads you choose. And beads don't go bad, so you know whatever beads you have left over at the end, store them in a baggie, store them in a little um, fishing tackle box, which is kind of like what I have mine in. Um, and that way you'll be able to use them again in the future for future projects. And it is kind of addicting that once you make one of these, you'll want to make more because if you have different uh, outfits, maybe you want to coordinate them with your outfits. This one that I'm making now is neutral. That will go with everything because it is shades of gray and black. Some of these beads are a little bit more opalescent that have a little bit of a blue tinge to them because I do have lots of blue in my wardrobe. Um, the summery looking one that I made that was the sea glass style. Um, I have lots of turquoise and light blues and light greens that I wear during the warmer months. So I figured at least if I start off the school year with these two, I'll have some choices um, to wear each day. And then at least it gives me a chance to disinfect them. Now the wire that I chose, this nylon wire, I specifically wanted nylon as opposed to the silk or cotton or suede. I've even seen cords like that. Because again, at night, we wanna disinfect these. Anything that's porous, like the silk or the suede, is going to stay damp. And that would be a breeding ground for mildew and bacteria and everything else. So I figured in the event that I'm just, you know, quickly wiping these down each night and the cord gets wet, it's no problem because it is a nylon. Um, originally I had bought just regular monofilament, kind of like clear fishing wire. Um, and then I discovered that uh, with the weight of these glass beads or stone beads, there was a chance that that wire could snap eventually. So I wanted something more secure than a monofilament. Mono means one. This particular thread that I'm using is seven strands put together. So it will make it a lot sturdier than just having the one. Okay, so I've threaded all my beads. Let's see if I measure from one lots per class to the end of that. Right now I'm at 18 and a half inches and I still have to attach the other lobster clasp. So to do this, we're gonna kind of do this one in reverse of how we did the last one. So this time I'm going to take my crimp bead, the itty bitty ring, and thread that on. Okay, then I'm going to take my lobster clasp, thread that through the hole. So I'll slide this back over just to give some room here to work. Then I'm gonna fold over the tail, thread it back through the crimp bead. Okay, and then we wanna try and pull it down as close as possible to that last bead, just that the beads aren't sliding around. I mean, yes, you can have some play between, but who wants to see just wire between the beads? You want it kind of tight. So I'm pulling it pretty tight there. Okay, hold the tail for now. Take your crimping tool, and again, you're gonna start with the outer notch. Give it a little squeeze. Inner notch, give it a little squeeze. Rotate and do the outer notch one more time to try and round off that crimp. I know it's hard to see because it's so tiny, but now we've got a pretty secure lock there. Um, again, I do have a little bit of play on my strand here, but that's okay. And I could slide it down a little closer if I wanted to. Let's see. Let's 
In other words, I hadn't pinched it completely tight yet, so it's still sliding a little bit, just so I can make sure that it's the right length I want before it. I give it a final tighter pinch there. Now it's locked down good and tight. I can't slide it. Now I'm gonna take my decorative C-shaped crimp cover and I will use my pliers, my flat pliers from the garage. Whoops. up like so. Put the open part of the C over that crimp bead. Give it a little squeeze. Rotate it. Give it another little squeeze just so that the seam kind of is closed up there because this, again this is going to be hanging down at the part where it's actually on top of my shirt or on top of the sweater. So you really don't want any um, like open seams where it's gonna catch on to the knit of a sweater and possibly pill your shirt. So this is just a nice way to kind of close that off and make it look nice and pretty. Okay, now we have this little bit of an extra tail going on. So we can thread that back down through the first couple of beads. I would say maybe the first three beads. Pull that tight, use my scissors. Trim that off. And there you go, we now have the completed mask lanyard chain. And then again, all you have to do is you use your little lobster clasp to put the elastic through. I've also seen variations of this online where people will get like the lanyard clasp, which is not as jewelry looking as a lobster clasp. So again, it might be totally fine if you're going for a more casual look, but if you wanted something that is a little dressier, the lobster clasp is definitely your better bet. Um, this chain is long enough that I can actually put this on over my head while the mask is still clean. And then when it's time for lunch, I can easily use the ear loops to take it off, kind of fold the mask this way. So that way the part that's up against your mouth is now inside. And then the rest of the outer part lays against the top of your shirt. So there you go, there you have it. Pretty easy. You can customize this as fancy as you want it. And it's easy to clean and it saves the problem of what to do with your mask when you're taking it off as you're running errands and you're going back and forth in and out of your car or when it's snack time or time for a coffee break and you don't wanna put your mask down on a table that you don't know who else has been touching it or what else has been sitting on it. So it's a great solution. Thank you for joining me at Teacher Baker Maker and I will see you next time.